On Mel Waters' land near Ellensburg, Washington, there's this peculiar hole. It might look like a well, but it's not. It's more of a dumping spot. Mel, like those before him, tossed all sorts of stuff into it. Garbage, old appliances, even worn-out tires. Oddly, the hole never seemed to fill up. As Mel pondered this, he noticed more peculiarities. His dogs avoided it. Strange signals interfered with his radio, and it appeared bottomless. But what is the reality of Mel's hole? Is it a portal to another dimension, a secret military project, or just an urban legend? Let's delve into the mystery of Mel's unusual hole. Mel's hole presents a circular pit measuring nine feet and nine inches in diameter, encompassed by a stone retaining wall that extends approximately 15 feet down. Beyond that, the hole descends into darkness. Remarkably, not only did Mel Waters and his wife deposit items into the hole, but so did his neighbors, a practice that had persisted for an extended period. Even before Mel arrived, his neighbors couldn't recall a time when the hole wasn't present. Curiously, despite the continuous depositing of objects, there is an absence of sound reaching the bottom, including the lack of an audible echo. Intrigued by this mystery, Mel Waters embarked on a quest to determine the depth of this enigmatic hole. Armed with his fishing expertise, Mel utilized spools of fishing lines for exploration. He affixed a one-pound weight to the line and lowered it into the hole. Astonishingly, it descended 4,500 feet, the entire length of the reel, without reaching the bottom. Undeterred, Mel repeated the experiment, this time with a roll of lifesavers attached. His objective was to check for water at the bottom. If present, the lifesavers would dissolve. However, they emerged dry. Undaunted, Mel employed additional spools of fishing line, each spanning 5,000 feet. Despite the increasing depth, no bottom was reached. Spool after spool descended into the mysterious abyss. Even when Mel exhausted his supply of line, the hole persisted in its mystery, with the depth reaching an astounding 80,000 feet, equivalent to over 15 miles, yet still no bottom was found. In the course of his experiments, Mel observed an intriguing behavior in his dogs. They refused to approach the hole. Even when coerced, the dogs staunchly resisted, digging their feet in. Strangely, there were no animals of any kind in proximity to the hole. No wildlife, no insects. Birds circled around it, further contributing to the eerie atmosphere. Considering the peculiar absence of fauna, Mel inquired with his neighbors, who were familiar with the hole, if they had noticed their dogs exhibiting unease. Their unanimous response was affirmative. Adding to the mystery, one neighbor recounted a perplexing incident involving his deceased dog. After disposing of the dog's body in the hole, the animal inexplicably returned a few days later, running through a nearby wooded area. Despite wearing the same collar, the dog seemed oblivious to its owner, raising speculation about alternate dimensions. It's indeed a perplexing theory. As the bizarre tales accumulated and the fishing line continued its descent, Mel found himself perplexed. He realized he needed assistance to unravel the mystery of this hole. In 1997, the go-to platform for discussing the strange and mysterious, while at the same time being taken seriously, was Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell, broadcasting from the high desert in the great American Southwest. Mel, feeling out of his depth, reached out to Art Bell on February 21st, 1997. Art responded by calling him, and thus Mel's hole became a subject known to the world. During a series of broadcasts, Mel Waters gradually unveiled more details about the mysterious hole. The positive aspect was that Mel received valuable advice from individuals worldwide, suggesting the use of lasers or radar to measure the hole's depth. However, the downside was that millions of people became aware of the hole due to Mel's radio revelations. Clues shared by Mel during the broadcast provided a discernible location for the hole. The day after the initial broadcast, upon Mel's return to his property, he encountered a blockage at the entrance. Surprisingly, the U.S. military had become aware of the hole and sought exclusive control. Following the Friday night broadcast, Mel observed helicopter activity around his property. 
This continued the next day, indicating that someone linked to the military was tuning into the program. Mel noted that the hole could influence its surroundings. Animals avoided it, but plants thrived. Oddly, radios behaved strangely near the hole. Bringing a radio close resulted in a staticky signal, followed by picking up broadcasts from an alternate source. On one occasion, Mel's radio started playing what he described as old-time music. Upon changing the channel, he tuned into a baseball game, only to realize that the game had been played in 1967, 30 years prior. Art's initial call with Mel extended for about an hour before concluding. Mel, who was staying in Ellensburg for a couple of days, made the call from there. However, upon Mel's return from town, he encountered a significant development. Armed military personnel had blocked the access road to his property. Clear signs of heavy machinery being brought in were evident. Officials informed Mel of a plane crash on his property, but there were no reports of a crash or signs of fire or smoke. Despite the lack of evidence, Mel was barred from accessing his property until a supposed investigation into the crash was complete. Upon requesting to speak with the person in charge, a civilian-clad man asserted that the land might not be exclusively Mel's anymore. The situation escalated when a thinly-veiled threat was issued, suggesting the discovery of a drug lab on the property if Mel persisted. Faced with this ominous warning, Mel considered going to the press. In response, the authoritative figure, often referred to as the man in black, dismissively said, Go ahead and talk. Nobody would believe it. However, Art Bell and his audience proved to be the exceptions, and they were willing to believe. A few days later, Art contacted Mel for an update. Mel recounted her neighbor's claim of witnessing a dark beam emanating from the hole, ascending through the clouds, darker than anything previously seen. While Mel himself did not witness this, Art Bell and the various callers pointed out that this region of Washington had a history of UFO sightings, disappearances, as well as other paranormal activities. Callers formulated diverse theories about the mysterious hole. Some speculated that it might sit on a ley line, serving as a portal to another dimension. Alternatively, it could be a portal through time, explaining the disappearance of objects thrown into it. A whimsical notion suggested that, in an alternate reality, an accumulating pile of garbage, old appliances, and deceased animals might exist. One caller even entertained the idea of the hole being a tunnel to the hollow earth, akin to a subway for lizard people. The range of theories continued, and since Art Bell couldn't access Mel's property anymore, he engaged with local residents to gather additional information. An elderly neighbor recounted that many years ago, a series of stone columns surrounded the hole, lacking crossbeams known as lentils, though there was a playful confusion with the word lentils. Awareness of potential government monitoring prompted caution from the audience, with the suggestion that the calling of the show might be a mistake. The episode concluded, and Mel agreed to return for an update. However, on the scheduled day, Mel failed to appear and calls to him went unanswered. Art Bell shared with the audience that a television crew had visited Ellensburg after the previous program, uncovering intriguing details. Although they didn't find the hole, they discovered military blueprints and substantial information suggesting a military presence in or around the area. The potential evidence included yellow gear tread marks on the ground. After a three-year absence, Mel resurfaces with a startling account. He claimed to have been offered $3 million annually to lease his property, but the deal came with stringent conditions, a non-disclosure agreement, an immediate departure from the country, and a commitment to never return. Mel accepted the offer and spent two years in Australia. However, the separation from his family prompted a return to the United States for a visit, against advisories. Despite warnings, Mel contacted Art Bell and agreed to appear on the radio, but he never showed up. According to Mel, on the scheduled day, he was on a bus heading to visit his nephew when an altercation occurred, leading to police involvement. All passengers, including Mel, were questioned and transferred to a different bus. Mel then experienced a blackout, only to wake up in San Francisco, realizing that 12 days had passed. In an alley, he discovered his wallet and keys were missing, his arm hurting, with needle holes and tape marks indicative of an IV. 
Unfortunately, he never managed to return to his property. Legal action was taken against Mel for alleged illegal construction of power lines, septic tanks, and paved roads on the property, even though he maintained he was not responsible for these developments. After two years of government occupation, Mel experienced a devastating loss of everything. Shortly after calling into Art's show, his bank account was mysteriously emptied. While skepticism emerged, with some dismissing it as a potential hoax, Art Bell, known for his mastery of hoaxes, allowed Mel to continue sharing his story. Art did mention that a TV crew in the area seeking the hole found no direct evidence of it, but did uncover signs of significant military activity. The no-fly zone had intriguingly expanded to encompass the region. Terra Server, a mapping site predating Google Earth, indicated a blackout of the entire area, a fact later confirmed. Skeptical callers proposed that Mel might have located the blacked-out part of the map and pretended it was his own property. However, Terra Server was launched six months after Mel's initial phone call, making such foreknowledge impossible. Further revelations emerged when a Native American tribe approached Mel, inviting him to Nevada to assist in researching another enigmatic bottomless hole. Mel confirmed to have been taken to the site, but clarified that he didn't venture all the way up. Conversations occurred among the Native Americans, the Basque, and others, leading to an agreement that everything was as it should be. Mel, not affiliated with major organizations like CNN or the FBI, had the opportunity to witness the whole, leaving the audience to ponder the mysteries that lay within. The second hole differed from Mel's and wasn't on the Indian Reservation, but on public land used by the Basques, an ethnic group with roots between France and Spain. Settling in the United States, including Nevada, in the mid-1800s, the Basques utilized the land for sheep herding. They informed Mel that the hole had existed for at least 200 years, considering it and the surrounding land sacred. Similar to Mel's hole, this second hole was just over nine feet wide, but it had a metal collar and lining extending as far as the eye could see. Notably, the hole radiated warmth, and the metal remained silent and vibration-free when touched or struck. Mel and the Basques conducted experiments, starting with lowering a bucket of ice about a thousand feet down, with some ice at the surface as a control. Surprisingly, the surface ice melted while the bucket's ice did not, and it transformed into large, non-cold and dry pieces resembling salt. Attempting to melt this ice over an open flame resulted in an unexpected outcome. It didn't melt. It caught fire and continued burning for months. They proceeded to conduct further experiments by sending various amounts of ice down the hole. Strikingly, approximately two-thirds of the time, the ice melted conventionally, but the remaining one-third underwent a transformation. At this juncture, one of the bolder Basque individuals volunteered to descend into the hole himself. The consensus? Not a good idea. Opting for an alternative, they decided to lower a sheep down the hole. In the presence of something extraordinary, something beyond the ordinary, akin to a religious experience, the observers were profoundly moved. The sheep resisted going into the hole, intensifying its struggle the closer it got, attempting to kick its way out of the crate. Lowering the crate to 1,000 feet, the sheep ceased movement, accompanied by a peculiar humming sensation. Left in the hole for 30 minutes, upon retrieval, there was no sign of life. The crate remained unchanged, and the sheep appeared unharmed, yet it was lifeless. The skilled Basque shepherds proceeded with a swift autopsy of the sheep, leading to an unexpected discovery. The sheep seemed internally cooked, dominated by what Mel described as a colossal tumor filling its body cavity. Astonishingly, the tumor began to move. Unveiling it, they found a fetal seal inside. A fetal seal? Indeed, like a baby seal, attached to the tumor by an umbilical cord, but possessing human-like eyes. The men observed the creature crawling to the end of the table for about two hours, with Mel sensing its desire to return to the hole. Placing it near the edge, the slimy creature emitted an ozone-scented fluid. After two hours of mutual observation, the seal creature gave the men a final glance and leapt back into the mysterious hole. Before Mel went to Nevada, he received a dire diagnosis of advanced esophageal cancer, 
granting him a mere six months to live. However, following his extraordinary experience with the mysterious hole, Mel miraculously became cancer-free. He attributes his recovery to the mysterious seal, perceiving the encounter as a transcendent experience that fundamentally transformed him. As the radio show neared its end, the host highlighted the actual road leading to Mel's hole, cautioning against taking it, hinting at the possibility of disappearance. Months later, Mel returned to Coast to Coast with a jaw-dropping update involving the bucket of ice. One of the Basque individuals, taking the burning ice to his cabin for warmth, experienced an unforeseen sequence of events. The ice, used in a stove, burned for months, extracting moisture from the air and creating a perpetually dry environment. Steam from boiling water was drawn into the stove, leading to a bizarre incident where the stove crashed through the floor and into the ground beneath the cabin. Despite this, it remained warm, prompting the owner to patch the floor and utilize the hole for warmth. Weeks later, upon returning home, the entire cabin had collapsed into dust. Seeking refuge with his brother, the owner discovered that the stove was now five feet underground, creating a perfectly smooth hole. It seemed to be generating a new bottomless hole, and retrieving the stove became an arduous task, requiring a giant crane. During this period, the Basque individuals claimed occasional visits from the entity discovered in the hole, that magic seal. Perceiving it as a benevolent presence, they characterized the entire experience as profoundly spiritual. Now there are vibrantly colored birds circling the hole, seemingly impervious to bullets, an unusual response to a spiritual encounter involving the shooting of birds. The Basque individuals go a step further, asserting that the magical seal communicates with them via radio, utilizing a system of beeps and clicks as a language intelligible to them. According to their account, the creature cautions that the ice is perilous, emphasizing the potentially catastrophic consequences if it falls into the wrong hands, predicting the destruction of the entire planet. When Art queries about a recording of this unique language, the Basque confirms its existence, having meticulously recorded everything. As the radio show progresses, various theories are entertained, leading to Art persuading Mel to return with substantial evidence, recordings, photos, videos, and any available documentation. Mel agrees to revisit Nevada and gather the evidence. However, the narrative takes an unexpected turn. After hanging up, Mel disappears without a trace. He doesn't respond to Art's calls, and eventually, the line is disconnected. Five years later, the saga of Mel's hole continues, leaving behind numerous unanswered questions. Confirming elements of this story presents challenges. While the terror server blacked out that part of Washington, Google Earth reinstated the location. However, considering the military's alleged takeover, one would expect them to conceal the hole. Despite years of search efforts, one location stands out on Google Maps, with someone physically visiting the site to investigate. The accompanying pictures provide a glimpse into the intriguing mystery. In the course of a phone call, Mel mentioned two old buildings on the property, and one eventually collapsed under snow aligning with the provided description. Additionally, the property features a hole approximately nine feet wide with a stone retaining wall, precisely matching Mel's description. This discovery generated considerable online buzz, but the hole turned out to be an old well with a definite bottom. Despite numerous claims on the internet asserting the discovery of Mel's hole, it remains elusive and has not been found. At least, not yet. Regarding Mel, his identity is still shrouded in mystery. No records exist of a Mel or Melvin Waters in the area, prompting speculation that he might have used a pseudonym for anonymity, a plausible choice. However, a notable setback for the story's credibility is the absence of pictures. In every interaction, Art presses for photographs, but Mel occasionally neglects to take pictures, forgetting at times, an aspect that raises skepticism. On another occasion, Mel asserts that cameras don't function near the hole due to interference. He also claims to possess pictures and recordings, but suggests that these are not readily available. Despite these inconsistencies, it's worth noting that Mel never capitalizes on the story, refraining from commercializing it. Even if it were a hoax, he could have potentially profited from selling t-shirts, books, 
or fabricated photographs, considering the story's appeal. Yet Mel never exploits the narrative for financial gain. A common argument asserts that Mel's story escalated in absurdity, leading him to eventually abandon the hoax. However, Mel remained relatively consistent with the facts over five years, and despite numerous attempts by Art Bell to challenge him, Mel proved resilient. The geological feasibility of a hole itself is questionable. A hole of considerable depth would likely be unstable and collapse unless it defies conventional understanding as a bottomless passage to another dimension. The true nature of Mel's hole remains elusive, leaving room for plenty of speculation. While many believe in the story, it's unclear if Art Bell shares this belief. Regardless, Art, being an entertainer, recognized the allure of such stories for his audience. Even after 30 years, Mel's hole persists as a legend that people continue to discuss. Despite skepticism and inconsistencies in Mel Waters' stories, the myth of Mel's Hole continues to fascinate individuals, and this story has become a part of central Washington's folklore. Some skeptics pointed out that there was no record of a Mel Waters living in Katitas County, and exhaustive searches failed to locate the elusive hole on Manistash Ridge. Geologists like Jack Powell and Stephen Riedel expressed doubt about the physical possibility of a bottomless hole of the depth described by Mel Waters. The Earth's pressure, they argued, would naturally seal off such a cavity. Despite scientific skepticism, the legend persisted. In 2008, the Grand Central Art Center in Santa Ana, California, hosted an art exhibit titled Aspects of Mel's Hole. Artists respond to a paranormal land event occurring in radio space. This exhibit showed how the Mel's Hole myth had transcended its radio roots to inspire creative interpretations. Locally, punch projects in Thorpe displayed artist depictions of Mel's Hole, while the Iron Horse Brewery in Ellensburg introduced a beer named Mel's Magic IPA, embracing the mystique surrounding the legendary hole. The longevity of the Mel's Hole myth suggests that it has become ingrained in the local culture and the tale continues to capture the imagination despite its dubious authenticity. The endurance of Mel's Hole in popular culture reflects humanity's enduring fascination with the unknown and the supernatural. Despite the story's dubious origins and the lack of concrete evidence, it has left an enduring legacy, proving that tales of mysterious portals and unexplained phenomena can capture the collective imagination. While skeptics question the authenticity of Mel's Hole, its influence on art, local culture, and even the creation of a themed beer demonstrates the enduring power of a captivating narrative. The legend lives on, inviting individuals to ponder the boundary between reality and myth, leaving central Washington with an intriguing piece of its own modern folklore. The story's endurance highlights the enduring allure of the mysterious and the unexplained, even in the face of scientific skepticism. Mel's Hole remains a testament to the enduring power of folklore and the way stories, once woven into the fabric of a community, can persist and evolve over time. In approaching stories like Mel's Hole and claims of otherworldly dimensions, critical thinking and skepticism play crucial roles. While these narratives may ignite curiosity and captivate our imaginations, it's essential to evaluate them with a rational lens. The lack of verifiable evidence inconsistencies, and the implausibility of certain elements should prompt healthy skepticism. Engaging in open dialogue, encouraging scientific inquiry, and promoting evidence-based reasoning can help demystify such tales. By creating a culture of critical examination, we empower ourselves to distinguish between captivating fiction and realities grounded in empirical evidence, preventing the undue perpetuation of unfounded beliefs. Thank you for joining us on this intriguing journey into the mysteries of Mel's unusual hole. If you found the story as fascinating as we did, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and ring the notification bell to stay updated. Share your thoughts in the comment section below, and until next time, stay safe.